Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you to Sean and the entire cast of, of folks for, for hosting uh, this summit. My name is Rob Beverly. Um, as uh, Jeanette said, I'm with the NSF. Um, I also want to make sure you know that some of my colleagues uh, from NSF are here. Uh, you'll hear from Mike Korn in a minute, um, and Kevin Thompson and Amy Apon are here. Um, this morning. Uh, so I want to talk today just really quickly and get out of your way so that uh, we can get to the fun stuff. Um, I do want to give a quick overview of OAC. Um, I want to talk about a few exciting uh, things uh, that we've done this year uh, in the space of cyber infrastructure, and then just a couple of things about what NSF and OAC are thinking about uh, going forward. <clears throat> Just so you know, uh, OAC, so I was at the, the table this morning and there were some first time attendees. So I do feel uh, compelled to tell you uh, who the heck OAC is. Um, OAC is the Office of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure. Um, our mission is explicitly uh, to enable cyber infrastructure or to provide cyber infrastructure to enable the research uh, and, and engineering community to do scientific discovery. Um, so that's that's what we do. Um, when we talk about, perfect, when we talk about cyber infrastructure, that is very much an overloaded word. Um, when we talk about cyber infrastructure, we're talking not only about like the compute um, and, and the data and the storage, but also all of the software stacks, also all of the networking, um, also the people components, um, and then wrapped around this whole ball of wax um, is cybersecurity, of course, which is why we're, um, why we're here. <laughs> I think um, it's important to get a sense of scale here for what OAC does. Um, last year, uh, which we're, you know, we're the government, so we're already past this year, right? So in fiscal 23, uh, we made uh, 351 awards, um, and uh, that was for a total budget of uh, just under $250 million. Um, of that, 50 awards went to uh, what we've been as uh, networking and cybersecurity, um, and about 13% of the total budget went to uh, cybersecurity. So the point of this slide is A, to give you a sense of um, uh, you know, the scale of our investments per year, um, as well as a sense of the portfolio balance. And um, this hopefully should convey that cybersecurity is an important component of the overall uh, portfolio. Um, NSF uh, and OAC, we like to show uh, this slide just to give folks a sense of uh, the sets of resources that are available to the community um, in terms of the advanced uh, uh, computing ecosystem. Um, so some of you are probably familiar with this, some maybe less so, um, but this uh, spans everything from sort of our core uh, high performance computing, our leadership class computing, as well as some of the experimental um, non von Neumann type architectures. Um, and then we also have all of the other stuff around it, right? So we have the access program, which is the successor um, to the exceed program. Uh, we have things for each, uh, high, uh, high throughput computing. Um, of course, we have test beds, all sorts of things. And as you're probably not <clears throat> surprised uh, to hear me say, all of these things uh, need uh, securing. Um, to try to help us wrangle uh, all of this advanced uh, CI ecosystem. We have uh, many different initiatives and partners and awards. Um, so I'm not gonna go through all of these, but things like the access program path, um, we're very proud of some of our work on uh, community and workforce uh, development, for instance, the minority serving CI consortium of which uh, Kevin Thompson is, uh, is leading. And then we have our centers of excellence, again, why we are all here. Um, so that's the, the 30,000 foot view of OAC. Um, drilling down a bit more, <clears throat> um, I do want to emphasize that from where we sit, um, there are some distinct challenges uh, to securing cyber infrastructure in this space of, of scientific CI. Um, often uh, we're encountering environments that are bespoke in different ways. Um, there's often large instruments. Uh, as Sean said, uh, it's all about data, 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 um, big compute. Uh, of course, the science is highly collaborative. Um, there's different specializations, uh, different kinds of scientists working on this stuff. The infrastructure itself is physically distributed. Um, and we have to ensure, or we would like to ensure, that it's all available, um, that there's workflow uh, integrity, um, and that all of it, hopefully, 
for the scientists is easy to use. And at the same time, we might have to adhere to different regulatory or policy requirements. Um, so when we at OAC think about all of cybersecurity, um, we really think of it as uh, an enabler of open and collaborative science, right? So we, we don't want to get in the way of science. We want to view cybersecurity as a means to enable and empower uh, and advance science. Um, so to that end, um, you've uh, heard me talk about OAC's initiatives. Uh, you know, we think of these three main uh, threads of computing, networking, and data intertwined through all of those is cybersecurity. It's an integral part of, of all of these. Um, and there's four main things that we hope cybersecurity will uh, engender. Uh, so collaboration, um, accessible infrastructure, robust infrastructure, and we want to try to <clears throat> leverage cybersecurity to ensure that the science itself is reproducible. Um, and then out of the side of this comes, uh, hopefully, out pops uh, out the, the right-hand side science and discovery. Okay, um, you know, I, I don't think for this audience, I have to belabor this point, but I want to, you know, sometimes we do have scientists who say, look, I do, I do open and unclassified science. Can you stop talking to me about cybersecurity? Um, so I just want to, uh, you know, paint a picture of a world for you where, for instance, imagine a world where the infrastructure is highly available and not vulnerable uh, to uh, abuse and misuse. Uh, data that you use as scientists has strong integrity protect protection uh, to prevent accidental or malicious modification. The collaboration amongst scientists and infrastructure is seamless and more importantly usable. Uh, the ability to do computation on, for instance, sensitive data. Many scientists, they're not doing classified research, but they're working on sensitive data, right? How can we enable a world where that um, is, is possible uh, in, a, in an easier way? Uh, research artifacts themselves contain uh, provenance metadata, and third parties can replicate and reproduce research findings. So at NSF, um, everything uh, points to this uh, bubble in the middle, uh, research and engineering cyber infrastructure to support science, um, over on the left-hand side, we have uh, some of our cybersecurity research programs that we have uh, that we fund. Um, in the bottom is SATSI. This is our fundamental cybersecurity program where they do basic research on cybersecurity. Uh, the CC program is all about applied cybersecurity for science. I'll talk about that in a in a moment. Um, we do have the MSRI program, which is a mid-scale program, and there's a really cool award I want to tell you about in a few minutes. Um, out of that program that's relevant to you all. Um, of course, we have the ACSS computing. Um, CC Star is all about ensuring that there's uh, capacity, network capacity and capability at the campus level to connect um, all of this infrastructure. Um, and then we have cyber training for workforce development. Um, we also have supported work in the operational side of it, for instance, with, with the research SOC, which has uh, transmogrified into the um, OmniSoc at this point, um, and CSSI, and then of course, uh, Trusted CI, again, why we're all here. Okay, so that's our, our again, big view of how we view uh, uh, cybersecurity at, at NSF. Um, I want to tell you, uh, I would be you know remiss not to tell you about some funding opportunities. Um, we have to, to advertise some of this. Um, so CC, CICI, um, is the Cybersecurity Innovation for Cyber Infrastructure Program, uh, solicitation 23517. Um, that has a due date of February 1st, 2024. Um, again, this is all about cybersecurity for uh, scientific cyber infrastructure. There's three uh, award uh, areas. Um, the first is uh, usable and collaborative security for science. Uh, the second is the reference scientific security data sets. Both of these are smalls up to 600,000. Um, and then we have a relatively new area uh, called transition to CI resilience, which is uh, in the medium category um, in NSF speak. So for those of you who do research in this space, uh, please come talk to us or, or view the solicitation. Uh, we view this as uh, you know, very complementary um, to, to all of what you do. Um, so uh, let's see, 14 minutes. Um, so, you know, I'll just, just to give you an example of, of one project out of the CC program uh, that was made, uh, I believe a year ago, um, we have uh, as an example of the kinds of things, uh, you know, I like to learn by example, the kinds of things that um, 
that the CC program funds. Uh, there was some some work from some folks that uh, came out of the DARPA grant Cyber Grant Challenge, uh, doing automated uh, binary patching. Uh, this is really cool because there's this whole swath of scientific code that's written in languages that are you know now antiquated. We might, you know, this, the code's not maintained, um, and indeed, we might not even have the code. So they're taking, uh, uh, they're looking at a large corpus of code and figuring out how to patch the binaries so that they're safer in many ways. Um, there's lots of examples of things like that, um, but this is what uh, CC funds. Um, I'd be remiss not to tell you about our, our IRNC program. This is the International r &E Network Connections Program. Um, I'm often surprised when I talk to the community and they're like, we had no idea that you fund, you know, work that connects um, the United States to the rest of the world. And indeed, our, um, our, you know, we view science as inherently um, a global collaborative endeavor. Uh, we hope uh, that there will be a solicitation coming out for this in the not too distant future. Uh, please talk to uh, Kevin or, or I about it if you're interested. Um, and then uh, I'm going to skip uh, CSSI and public access. Okay. Um, so, so cool. So that's the overview of OAC. Um, that talks a bit about the, the pro funding programs we have and, and what, what you know, we're actively supporting. I wanted to take a moment to highlight a few cybersecurity relevant awards that were made uh, in FY23 um, that you know, I, just want, I think the community would benefit from, from knowing about. Um, so <clears throat> this is one of our stock slides. Um, FY23 was an exciting year. Um, two things I would, I would call out on this slide. I'm obviously not gonna be able to talk about all of it, um, but the first is this National Discovery Cloud for Climate. NDCC is a big push these days um, within OAC. Uh, the other is the, the NAIR pilot. Um, and I, I will uh, talk a bit about um, some of this. Um, I put this slide up and um, this, is, uh, this is, the whole point of this slide is when we think about cyber infrastructure, remember at the beginning I said it's you know the compute and the data and the storage and all of that. We again view cyber infrastructure as the whole continuum of stuff. This is a great example of um, an award that we made uh, several years ago to do um, edge-based uh, sensors, um, to do uh, edge-based sensor computing. Um, and recently, the, of course, there were the uh, devastating fires in Hawaii um, and we made a rapid award um, to augment um, some of these prior awards uh, on um, sensor uh, hazard uh, detection. Um, so you might say, uh, well, Rob, what does that have to do with cybersecurity? Well, very recently, uh, we also made an award to another group uh, that's looking at the cybersecurity of uh, hazard workflows. Um, that's actively uh, acting as a third party, um, that's looking not only at the security of all this edge AI ecosystem and sensors, but also um, looking at it from a resilience standpoint, um, which is some really cool work. Um, I wanted to highlight also um, earlier this year, myself, um, some colleagues from NIST and some colleagues actually from Trusted CI uh, worked on a uh, something called the, the High Performance uh, Computing Security Workshop. Um, and this resulted in a report uh, the community might be interested in knowing uh, what NIST and NSF are, are thinking about there. And there's a whole bunch of active work um, in that space. And then I also wanted to highlight, um, remember I was talking about that whole ecosystem of what NSF does, and we have these mid-scale awards. We very recently made an award uh, to ISI for a cybersecurity uh, test bed. Um, so let me tell you um, about this test bed. This is uh, joint with uh, USC ISI and uh, Northeastern uh, uh, with Yelena Merkovic uh, as lead PI. Um, so this is a mid-scale cyber, uh, cybersecurity test bed um, that has some pretty novel properties. Um, they sat down and they said, you know, first of all, let's be introspective. Let's look at what the needs of the community are. What do cybersecurity researchers need to do the work um, that they that they want to do like what are you know the road is littered with failed test beds right so what um, <clears throat> what uh, what are they what has not been the capability um, that all these researchers need um, so they have um, a whole bunch of heterogeneity in this test bed um, everything from CPUs to GPUs um, to PLCs uh, trusted execution environments FPGAs um, a whole bunch of IoT stuff 
And a huge component of this work is reproducibility. There's really a crisis in cybersecurity research being able to do reproducibility. So from the get-go, this test bed is built with reproducibility in mind to make it easy for the researchers uh, to have uh, reproducibility and to do artifact evaluation. In fact, artifact evaluation is a big piece of this, um, and they're going to work with the community on that. Of course, realism, uh, this test bed is designed to be uh, to have uh, at scale testing, uh, to have you know real backgrounds, so on and so forth. Usability, it has, uh, I believe, six different portals catering to different levels of sophistication. So you could be, if you're a professor and you want to use this uh, with your students, there's going to be a very easy interface, you know, web or Jupyter or something like this. Um, if you're doing, uh, if you need a, a much more, you know, uh, hands-on capability to the test bed and more advanced features, there's capabilities for that as well. So we're excited about this and we view it as being a uh, very complementary and would love to see more work taking scientific cyber infrastructure and testing it on these kinds of uh, test beds. Um, I also wanted to point out the last award um, is uh, AHEC. Some of you may or may not be aware of AHEC. AHEC um, is uh, the American uh, Indian uh, Higher Education Commun Consortium. Um, this is all about supporting uh, the, the TCUs, the uh, tribal uh, community. Um, we're very proud uh, to say that we've been funding some, some work uh, with AHEC, um, and they're gonna be doing a hackathon uh, in uh, spring of next year. This is really exciting. They get over a thousand students um, and they're gonna be doing uh, a whole bunch of cybersecurity exercises um, I encourage you to engage with them uh, insofar as you're able. Okay, I have seven minutes to talk about the future. <clears throat> All right, um, so this is where we get to the stock slide deck. Um, so we have a new uh, division director at OAC. Um, these are her slides, so I'm going to do my best. Um, this is uh, some of this on the top row is is what I would call. Um, largely um, things that we've been doing for a while. What I do want to highlight is this, this bottom uh, row here, and, and in particular, this thing called uh, the Nair. Um, who, who here has heard of the Nair? All right, a few hands. Okay, so let me tell you about the Nair um, because it's, um, it's, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, I will say from where I sit as a program officer, you know, we get proposals that come in, right? I will tell you, and don't quote me on this, turn the Zoom off, I would say like 80 to 90% of those proposals talk about using AI, okay? <laughs> I mean, it is the new hot sauce. Um, so in uh, 2019, there was federal legislation to establish the NAIR. This is an acronym for the National AI Research Resource. Um, the objective is to strengthen and democratize the US AI innovation ecosystem in a way that protects privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties. Um, the goals are to spur innovation, uh, increase the diversity of talent in AI, uh, improve US capacity for AI R&D, um, and an advanced trustworthy AI. Um, so OAC is taking, uh, actually NSF has uh, been charged with being the uh, leader in establishing across the federal government, uh, the NAIR pilot. Um, that's something we're actively doing. And you might notice a few key things here um, you know, improved capacity. You know, OAC is all about cyber infrastructure capacity. So this is in our wheelhouse. Um, the other thing is uh, trustworthy AI. Now I know uh, AI security, there's different ways and lenses to, to view that. Um, and, and of course we don't, we as this community don't always get involved in like trusted uh, a, uh, AI in the sense that maybe some folks view it. Um, but I will say that I think there's an acute need um, to secure AI-enabled cyber infrastructure workflows, okay? Just in general, okay? Um, so the workflows, the science workflows these days are very uh, AI intensive. Um, and I think we need as a community to think about that um, a lot where that goes forward. Um, if you're interested in reading all about this, there's big, big reports. Um, that's why this slide is here, just really as a pointer for you to read. Um, before going to bed. Um, and so there's there's lots of documents um, about this. Okay, whoops. So this is my last slide, um, and maybe I can finish a little early or take questions. Um, and so this is um, the, again, stock OAC slides from our division director um, about the things that we see 
from where we sit at OAC of how the landscape is changing, um, where the world is going and where our focus areas are or should be. Um, so, you know, we see, uh, you know, a, a changing landscape in some ways. Um, you know, what does this mean for our collective uh, strategy going forward? So first of all, new user communities uh, requiring computing and data infrastructure. Um, OAC, I would say, has been a leader in this space. Uh, we published, uh, or we were part of uh, soliciting a report called The Missing Millions, um, and indeed, I think it's critically important to reach out to uh, other user communities to do all of the science that we that we need to do. Um, we see the underlying computing technologies changing. Um, you know, that could be everything from from hardware, the slowing of Moore's law, um, as well as like infrastructure as a service, right? So the sort of paradigms of how we do computing are changing. Um, I've already mentioned the rise of AI and massive data. Sean mentioned it earlier. I don't think anyone will question it, but um, the the power of it. Um, but you know, uh, it, it is the the brave new world, um, and, and that's where we're focused. Um, and then uh, you know, also just be cognizant um, that there's new and pending legislation and initiatives. Things like NAR, things like uh, the Chips Act, um, are what drive us, if you're always wondering, you know, how does NSF make its decisions, you know, this is the kind of thing that, that goes into it. Um, so with that, I will uh, get out of your way. I do want to say, um, you know, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this community. Uh, we're always interested to know what OAC is doing right, what we're doing wrong, or what we could be doing better. Um, if you're not already on our mailing list, people are always like, how do I become a reviewer or a panelist? Or, you know, how do I stay abreast? Um, well, we have a 1995 listserv, so uh, if you send an email uh, to that, um, you'll get on the list um, and, and be plugged in. I encourage you to do that or reach out to any of us. Again, Amy Apon is up there, Kevin Thompson, and I will get out of the way for, for uh, Mike.